All right, everybody, so it's getting kind of late in the afternoon. It looks like there's some long faces and uh, overly warm people in here, so we'll just go through this as quickly as possible. I uh, won't take as long as I had planned on because, well, that would be too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as I've had running for a little while, this little ticker um, right up here is the control box for the ticker tape. So, you know, it says, hello, I am a ticker. I'll speed it up a little bit. And it will, of course, slow way down. But, uh, <laughs> all right, so there. Now it's going really fast. You know, I have a ticker tape. And this ticker tape I'll make available to everyone. It has the instructions on how to use the ticker tape in the ticker tape. So if you've got this box to see the ticker tape, you just hit these little uh, three little periods. So and then you can type whatever you want into here. You can save it if you want to reuse a message several times over. Um, in this case, I have imported this ticker tape from the computer that's working in this Dragon's class. So you can import, export any type of data with the Promethean board and with the Active Studio can be manipulated. Uh, let's see. Well, we won't cover the ground rules because there's no time for humor. And <laughs> so we'll go straight to Promethean 101. All right, so I've deliberately kept the page browser open so that if you're if you're looking at any of these slides, I've tried to make it obvious on what you're trying to find. So if you use this slide as a reference, then you know that your resource browser is right here, this column, right? And I have, you know, home of such popular features is paper. I know this is a common thing, so we use our medium. And then activities and tips. Or excuse me, background. And then paper. So we all know the paper for options. And then, you know, you just drag and throw it onto the screen and you're good to start going. If you cannot find this, the view button is going to be right up here. Browsers is what you're looking for to get this stuff. All right, so your trash bin's down here if you just need to get rid of anything on the fly really quickly. Can't really see the little guy because of the sticker, but there he is. And your page count, just like any sort of PowerPoint, is just tracking what page. In this case, we're on page three of nine. So, this is our adventures in importing media. The Promethean board lets you import any type of media that you can think of, be it a website, a website link, a existing PowerPoint. I was initially going to put a PowerPoint in here, but I didn't really have time, and I decided to just use the Promethean uh, PowerPoint system itself as the PowerPoint. But you can import a PowerPoint from, say, Ms. Tucker, if you wanted to import your PowerPoint that you gave uh, for your last presentation into Promethean Board to work with it. However, you could do that. Okay. Um, I have here, for shameless self-promotion, these are two links uh, to documentaries I did. So if you click on, I've embedded them as a sort of, I guess it's supposed to look like Planet Earth, but when you click on it, it goes straight to the website. It doesn't start playing it, that way you don't have to worry about things engaging automatically. But you can embed any type of media by going up here to insert. And in this case, what I did was I hit the media option. And then it's, of course, going to bring up the resources from your computer. But you can also <coughs> insert a link, which is what I did. So I just pulled straight from the website. In this case, you can just you know go up into your browser tab and you know copy or drag it all, select it all, however you want to do it, with Control c or you know, right-clicking and hit copy, and then you can just paste it straight into this. Choose how you want it to be displayed. This is the action object. It's what creates this little globe that you can click on. But you can also just have it link as straight text. I have a link for that at the very end of the PowerPoint. It'll make that make a little more sense. Um, this is for putting a particular image on, but I mean that's a lot of work if you want to embed your link into a specific image. You just need to make sure you already have that image. I realize I'm going pretty quickly, but uh, here's a link to an interview I posted for StoryCorps with my grandmother, just to show you that you can link a host of different things. And he is going to send me the PowerPoints and we'll make copies of it so everybody Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I know that a common complaint was that the last fellow moved too fast. But I know that there are some specific issues people wanted to get into. So I'm just trying to go over what we already, most of us already know pretty quickly. I've 
prepared this, what I did was I used our document camera to take a still picture, which I'd be happy to show you all how to do another time. And from the still picture, I imported it using insert. And then in this case, I just chose media. And I found that picture on the computer. And it put it on the uh, Promethean board. And what you can do once you got it onto the board, grab your selector. And as you know, since I've written text on it, it has automatically resized it. And that's what this box is. So now whenever I try to change things, it's going to do strange stuff. But initially, it was just the picture. So what I did was I traced over the picture, and I shrunk it down to the size that it's at now. You can manipulate the size of anything the same way that I just did right there. You just sort of drag over it. And it will, it's smart enough to know generally what you're trying to grab. So you like that time, you grab all this. Uh, what's on this screen are the sort of quick and dirty instructions on how to use your Promethean projector remote. I know that we, I mean, myself included, hit these blue buttons all the time. But, so if you need to know how to get back to your PC, for example, here's your quick reference guide. It'll be in the slide anytime you need it. Or how to get back to the DVD tuner, which is composite video. So moving on to the next slide, we have the other remote. The remote that works the DVD VHS hybrid uh, device. You know, as most of you know, it also gets your cable TV. So I just tried to outline the common buttons that might be a bit puzzling at first. The rest of it works exactly like any remote you'd have at your TV or your home TV. All right, so this is your menu bar. Uh, you know, I mentioned that if it's moved, then you'll just need to sort of remember how it's set up and look for particular buttons. What I'm going to talk about now is these two particular buttons. This is your desktop toolbox button and this is your desktop annotation button. Anytime you're unclear what a button does, you can just lightly hold your Promethean uh, stylus over whatever it is, and it will give you a tool tip. So what we're going to do now is hit the desktop annotation button, which is this blue screen with some squiggles, sort of to indicate that you're drawing on your desktop. So you're going to draw on the desktop. So, this works with any sort of website. I'm just going to bring up Internet Explorer, or actually need to grab my selector, then bring up my Internet Explorer. So, if you want to bring up a web page, um, a few of you have brought up some of the Scott Forsman Mathematics web pages before, and instead of having to worry about the document camera, if you can't get it to work just right, you can just bring up the actual web page itself for workbook pages. I know Miss Robbins has done, um, and then you can literally just, you know full screen it, and then just write on the page, like you're writing on the web page. Um, spray bottle, of course, will quickly you know, bring up your different clear annotations options. So in this case, we'll just clear that. So again, this button right here, desktop annotation, is what allows you to just write on the computer blankly outside of Active Studio. I'm going to hit it again, and you'll notice when it goes back to the Active Studio, we actually have a new clip chart called Desktop Clip Chart. Um, the Desktop Clip Chart is just the software's way of saying, okay, if they need to write on the desktop, and then you just select that, and it'll go back to this. Yes? Is that the same thing as writing on a, no, the other, what is it? I call it Elmo. Is that it's the same thing? functionally the same, but this is a way you can do it without having to get into the Elmo. So, if you just want to use like an online resource without actually having to have something underneath it. But I enjoy having something underneath it, so will I be able to write on that? Yes. Okay. You will. By doing that button? No. You'll okay. still need to go through the motions of uh, opening up the, the active view software for the Elmo and then live view and you know, freeze framing it. What you've been doing basically with the Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of you have been asking about all the features that the document camera has. So we'll go through those real quickly. I'm going to cycle power to the document camera. 
and show you how to take right side up uh, live images and still images with it. Because you can rotate its orientation. see everybody that's kind of upside down at the moment. I'll make this full screen. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back to this. And I'm going to close the desktop annotation. <coughs> and then minimize that so that we've got this. Most of you are, at this point are used to working with the document camera some form or somewhat. So we have an upside down image and it's really blurred. We want to first focus and white balance our image by holding this button down and releasing, and it'll start cycling through its focus very slowly in this case. There we go. All right, the image still doesn't make any sense though, so we can hit this blue button to bring up our extra buttons. This one's for saving an image. This one's for shooting a movie. Since we've already got a movie being shot, I don't need to shoot a movie of shooting a movie. This button right here, green button is your menu options. Camera set. So, this button right here, rotate, does exactly as it suggests. So now we have a right side image. So if you want to take an image of your classroom, now that you've got it the right, you know, we've got the proper frame, it's properly focused. So I just took a picture. Hope nobody was asleep. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to rotate this back the other way so that the next person comes along doesn't think it's broken. So now that we have that image, I wonder where to put it. We could insert it onto another page. Uh, we're a little pressed for time, so we won't go through that. But what I have here is a subject matter that uh, I've been asked a lot of questions about, which is the active boats. These are two links that will automatically go to uh, YouTube guides that go a little in-depth about the active uh, boats. And I have brought Mrs. Doramus' active boats um, with me because I've already set up all of them and I took the time to upload a database with everybody's name. So, I guess we should just launch into that. So you'll need to have your browser open. The last button on your browser, it looks like the remotes. So this computer hasn't been configured for them, but it does have an existing database. So we have a little bit of work ahead. So it's this button for registration. And as you notice, I have a database that's popped up with everybody's names. And the, you know, if you have your computer automatically set up like Ms. Dramus' computer, you can just hit automatically assign devices. And I have set ours up so that it will automatically assign devices when it's the students to the students based on alphabetical order. So the device number one will be, you know, in this case, Shatisha Allen. Um, I've also set it up the same way as far as our database goes, although it looks like it may have rearranged itself up a certain person. But since this computer's never had active votes hooked up to it, we're going to have to do the registration, which is the lengthy part. These are what you want to register, your active votes. So register. <clears throat> Choose the number of active vote devices you would like to register. I know that I have, I believe, 21 or 22 that are actually capable of it, and I think there's, what, 17 of us, but for the sake of just getting a few out, we'll do five. All right. So, if you have a remote, we're going to walk through the uh, process right now. So, if you have a remote, I'd like you to press and hold the central registration button until you get both of those lights working. One in the middle? The one in the middle? Mm -hmm. 
So now that you have two lights glowing, you want to enter the code BFF. So once you have the red light and the green light, after it's yes, it's the same code. So we are three fifths registered. Who is having trouble? I wonder. <coughs> Well, it's going to assign them to teachers in alphabetical order, so, you know, if I wanted to, I would have given one to everyone, but since we don't have too long, I just went with five. So, one of you is not going to be registered, and we're going to see, okay, so we have four devices registered, and now we can assign them. Uh, well, there are the four devices there. Right. So they've shown up. Oh wait, someone was doing something. These are the four devices, so we can move on to a question. Are you having fun? Yes, that is an authentic question on an authentic PowerPoint, and you can authentically answer it with your remote if you have it. Or is there not an A or a B? Yeah, yeah not a maybe. Where's the maybe button? I left the maybe off. <laughs> for the I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there is a, it is a lot of work to get these initially set up. I'll be honest. There is a lot of you know, leg work in the beginning. But once you get used to the process, it's pretty quick. Or it goes by pretty quickly as far as generating questions go. Uh, the way I generated this question... Insert. So under your insert tab, you have questions. Mm -hmm. Control Q. And then it brings up this sort of convoluted, complicated looking menu. But it's really pretty simple. If you want to add a new question, double click. Notice how I suddenly have the ability to edit that text. So you just delete where it says type here to add a new question and write your question. And then you can select the question type. <coughs> Well, without adding a new question, it's probably not going to let me do that. But your question types are what you would expect. Yes or no, multiple choice, true, false. Um, you can specify a correct answer. And you can also keep that answer hidden throughout the polling process. Um, this menu lets you decide how that question is going to show up on the screen. So in this case, you know, I chose, I hit this replace the page content with the new design. And then it, notice how it gives you this option, or sequence of options. The question that you've written out in that far box will automatically go in place at the actual question prompt. And so basically you're just choosing the proper format for that prompt. So if you've got a multiple choice question, you find a prompt that's multiple choice. In this case, since I was working with yes or no, I've only got yes or no or multiple or true false that stuff up here. So if it's true or false, you just choose true or false. Hit apply. And so now we have, are you having fun, true or false? Now, another way to use these that was on these YouTube clips uh, that I watched about two weeks ago was to use your desktop annotation <coughs> feature. So that now notice, this is still hung around, even <coughs> though we're where we can write on the desktop. And you can go to um, websites that host quizzes like the one that I saw was Brain Pop. And on Brain Pop, you could have a small like quiz for math, reading, writing. And once you have the remotes done, you just have them answer the questions on the remote without actually you know, displaying the correct answer on the screen. You just move on to the next question. The remotes will remember uh, what those answers are.
But since we have, don't have any active device poles, it's a little difficult for me to, uh, when without having to assign all of the remotes to everyone, it's a little difficult for me to show you on the fly uh, what it looks like when someone's selected an answer. But once you have answers selected, you will, it will generate a box that takes up the <coughs> force of the screen that will uh, display a graph of what students selected what answers. Or you can also have it set to display specific students' specific answers. So in this case, using Shatija Allen as an example, if it were a five-part quiz and she answered yes, yes, no, yes, yes, I could set the score output to display her specific answers, yes, yes, no, yes, yes. Or I could set it to display the class's overall answers by question, i.e., half of the class voted yes on this question, half voted no on this question. And you know, and on question number two, 75% said yes, 25% said no. So there's a variety of display options, but without really getting into designing, say, like an entire quiz, it's difficult to demonstrate how that works. <coughs> And um, I wasn't open with specific questions, but I thought I'd just launch into things. So now, if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to take them. Where do I be? You are you thoroughly confused? <laughs> Ooh, so, so, I thought the crap was going to be something I could do. You just click it on me. Well, once you get them ready, once you get it, I mean, it, it's simple, yeah. but it's, mm -hmm. it's the, the initial setup. Mr. Ramos has service because Mr. Um, Crane. I think this uh, did has her registered. Anybody else has registered their DIN? The trick <laughs> to registering them is to try and engineer ahead of any long-term problems you might encounter. Um, so we can actually pass this around, and you can see what I mean by engineering ahead. They just come as a totally non-distinct thing with a little plastic tap right here. They will not function if the little plastic tab is removed. In order to give a unit a distinctive quality, unfortunately, you're going to have to take it apart. So you're going to have to use this security uh, screw to remove this bit. Do we have that one? This one? Yeah, every, I brought this kit to show you everything you need is in this kit. Okay, good. So once you remove the screw, It is an involved process. That's when you can, it opens up, so you can, you can't just pull the tab out without taking this apart, but just by pulling the tab out without taking it apart and registering it, you, it now just becomes an unnamed device that you would have to remember its serial number on the screen in order to remember what device it is. So you also, what comes in your kit is, well I can't seem to find that at the moment, but these little, <laughs> Um, this is the number right here, right? Yes. So you have A00 zero, zero what? Five. Five. And so what I've done is as I registered each individual device, there was a sticker sheet, uh, and I would just pull off the spe specific sticker for the device so that, you know, A001 zero, zero, is the first device I registered. And when I moved to the second one, I put in the sticker for the second one. So then A002 is the second device, so on and so forth, until I got through 21 devices, which took a while. But. <laughs> but I did it that way so that now all you have to do is maintain a specific database of your students, which we naturally keep a roll of them uh, in alpha. So each year or each time you get new students, they can just redistribute, like I mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, so once you get over all once you get all this, and you can always use it for you. You don't have to change it every year. Once you get this part done, it's done. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So you won't have to do it again next year. So. Or at least doing it this way. I imagine yeah. that if if you didn't really put a lot of thought into it, you might find yourself redoing it over and over and over again. Even though this way might take a little while in the beginning. It saves you the headache of having to revisit these, except when you need to change their batteries. Which, by the way, this is how you change their batteries. So you have to take them apart. They do use batteries. And that's what this plastic uh, tab is for, actually, is to keep them from consuming their batteries until you're using them. So 
I would only recommend removing the plastic tab for the number that you have. That way you can keep, in this case, there's about nine in reserve. Um, I think they will stand up to a lot of punishment. They seem to be built reasonably well and they're pretty hard plastic, so you don't really have to worry about your kids tearing them apart. Um, beyond that, it is just about engineering ahead when it comes to using the active boats. Uh, I don't foresee a tremendous amount of use for them in grades, say, under three or third grade, but they're definitely something that could be used for fourth and fifth, and we will work together to get these properly organized and set up for each classroom. Um, also, in the meantime, I will continue looking for easy ways to make use of them. It's not such a computer-intensive headache, because it's not the most user-friendly system right out of the gate. I will be honest <coughs> with you, but it's just, it's like anything, it just takes practice and motivation, so. Uh, any other specific questions? Yes, Mr. Carr, yes. Now, once we get the register, this is Friday, I'm giving a test, and each child has his, what's called a clicker, mm -hmm. uh, multiple choice test. The data, Results are stored it will, into. Uh, it it maintain it adds them into the database. Uh, okay. I would show you once we actually get to, once we start creating the test. I can really show you how to like that, but without actually sitting down and spending like fifteen minutes. <coughs> one together. Each child's answer is recorded by his or her name. Yes. Somewhere. If you engineer it this way, it right. will always keep track of it. And from that point, you can just maintain a separate database of their scores from, you know, say the beginning of the year onwards. And you can export those databases into like an Excel spreadsheet to track change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a really open-ended system. It's, the Promethean board's meant so that, in this particular program, the Promethean Studio, is meant so that you can put date, plug data into it, mm -hmm. and that you can pull that data out of it in order to use it for other things. And then, like at the end of the test, you'll be able to bring your five question and whatever you know the scale is, transfer that you know into your grade book. Sure, you could. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes I would worry about the fallibility of these machines, so there's always that you know possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other specific questions? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have this? Can we take that blank? and start at the beginning and show us how you built that. How I built? How you built a slideshow. Oh, sure. What we'll do is we'll <laughs> open up a new flip chart. And that's under file? Mm-hmm. Okay. File, new flip chart. And any the, the way it starts out is, you know, doodle, doodle, doodle. All you have to do to create a new page is just page up. And then say, Let's say I accidentally page over a few times. So now it will just remember that I have, in this case, six blank pages to my one page with some random doodle on it. And um, as far as the style, it's just a matter of you know browsing through your backgrounds. In this case, I just grabbed what I thought was some paper that had a little bit of contrast without having lines on it. And I just did that for each individual slide. So when I went over to slide four, I just grabbed a sheet of paper drag it right back over. Um, and then, you know, the content per page is just up to you. And, but we will walk through how to insert media, for example. So, let's insert media and find the Promethean uh, where I hit everything. So let's say we want to insert a picture again. Since I, since I went ahead and dropped the pictures that I'd already inserted, um, I have found my picture in the file, so I got it selected, I hit open, and you see it's just going to drop it straight into the uh, surface. So this goes back to what I was saying, if you want to adjust its size, say sometimes it comes up too big, notice now it is just automatically detected, oh, he wants to work with this picture, so I've got these boxes around. Cool. And that was me, there we go. So now I can shrink it down make it big, I can grab it, and then, you know, I can rotate it however I need to. 
Uh, you can, you know, these are what you'd see in any basic sort of photo editing software. You can crop it, anything like that. Uh, let's do another picture. So it's just like, say, from the computer's resource library. So let's look at what Windows has as a sample picture. And that's me saying that I've already taken 30 minutes of a good time. All right, so that time I just chose one of Windows' sample pictures and it imported it straight. Um, again, same, different, same basic principle. You can move it around as you see fit. You can <coughs> write on it. As you need to. What did you do to make it small? I saw you go over there real fast, but I didn't see what you used. Ah, so I grabbed see. my pointer. Oh, okay. And then all I did was just sort of drag over it a little bit, okay. and the program's smart enough to know that it knows that, well, in this case, now that I've got some squiggles, it thinks, oh, you must certainly want to mess with these squiggles in this picture. <laughs> but that's pretty much it when it comes to manipulating at least steel meat. What, 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 okay. Uh, you, you said earlier the desktop <coughs> annotation allowed you to write on the screen. Mm -hmm. Could you go do that one more time? Certainly. I'd be happy. I think I it is this button right here, and I'll mouse okay. over for a and second. And what is that on there? It's supposed to resemble, you know, Windows normally, as some of these computers that are up right here show you, it's just sort of like a blue background, like okay. the two computers okay. behind you. Right. This is supposed to be like the blue background of Windows with some squiggles on it. So, okay. so notice now we have the blue background of Windows. It's basically just supposed to resemble like a default desktop screen. And then tap that again. The end. Mm -hmm. And then once you've started desktop annotating, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. you'll have this desktop flip chart, which is actually what you're working on. Okay. It's the, technically it's creating a sort of layer that you're. It's it's basically creating like imagine a transparent sheet of glass over the desktop, and that's what you're squiggling on. Um, Toolbox. So, uh, we don't have a great pen handy, I don't believe, but this is for if you want your student input. Uh, the other gentleman who gave the first PD talked about it. So, you notice now we have this orange micro sort of, it's like our menu bar, but it's orange and small. This will allow your students to use their gray pen <coughs> to write on things or to erase things. At the same time that, yeah, I can't even talk on anything because I don't have a great pen. But at the same time that you're doing things. So you can potentially have two users working at the same time with this. Um, revealer. So with the revealer, if you grab it at the top, I'm terrible at grabbing this thing. But you can drag it up this way. And then you can. You can do that. So this is if you know if you've got did you got say the answers down here. Now where was that? It's under your toolbox. And that's a picture of a hammer. It's a hammer and a wrench. Okay. Go to It is. Since I've got it, since it's checked, it, or since we've got it selected, it's just going to have a check mark. But normally, it's just going to have like a black lampshade sort of. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll turn it off and then <coughs> go back to it so I can show you what I mean. So so now we've got the reveal, reveal. Excuse me. And then under. And is the camera like a camera type picture? If there is a camera on the Promethean board itself, I don't know where it would oh. be hidden. But I believe this is if you have like an onboard webcam already embedded with the computer. Or if you want to take like a snapshot of the board, which is like a screenshot of what you're working on. Okay. Um, with our math tools, a few of these have been going over before. I've seen a few of you using them. So you've got your dice roller. Uh, can I say? And then you can output that to the flip chart, and it will write it somewhere. It might not be able to see it. it might put it on top of our wall here. <coughs> yes, it did. 14. There we go. So 
So I did the little dice, the little cubes with my kids, put to them, and they roll down, they give me the answer, and I have them to add quick to them. Great. Now it is a great counting on exercise. Um, and then more tools is where you will find the ticker tape, um, whose instructions, you know, it was giving. And there's an in in software web browser. I haven't used it yet. For all intents and purposes, if you need to browse around on the web, you're better served to just you know alt tab and browse around the web yourself. And if you need to write on that, just hit your desktop annotation and write on it. So. Uh, feel free to experiment with the actual web browser, but I would probably just stick with Internet Explorer and desktop annotation. Uh, as far as the features here, there's nothing that really pertains to the classroom. And then I already brought up uh, dual unit. We'll turn that off. And then we will turn off the desktop annotation. The express poll is how you do uh, sort of quick yes or no poll. So it's going to be really difficult to see. Uh, this is one of the two radial menus that you can do. This is, for example, like let's say I'm on a web page like BrainPop that has a quick quiz. Uh, you know, yes or no questions, true or false questions. So, so all right, so I've got it, the multiple choice selected. And this is, you know, how many multiple do I want it to be? You know, one through two, one through three, one through four, etc. So, so now, if anyone still has a, uh, yeah, if you want to hit a button, see what happens. On the alphabet. Mm -hmm. Anything A through D. It should remember. Yes. So, notice that now we have input from device three. So, up and device one. Now I'm trying to get. It. <coughs> there we go. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's just sort of, it's deeper into the menu. And again, this was just an express poll, so it was just, you know, something we did on the fly, so there was no prearranged question. Um, again, if you want to see this in regards to like a test, you're going to have to prefabricate the questions and go through the entire process, and this data will be available at the end of that. So you can see I can have the answer what. This is what I was talking about as far as giving you a write-down of percentage based on questions. Uh, this is, you know, speed to answer in this case. So you've got a bunch of different ways to visualize the data that you get and to break it down into hopefully something that you can make use of in your classroom. And so that appears when everybody has answered their question? Yes, or, or if you stop the time period and it will populate the uh, list. Okay. Because you, uh, I did it really fast, but you may have noticed in the center it said, you know, somebody hasn't completed the... Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it will always give you a chance to make sure everyone's answered it. And you can also set a timer, uh, which I'd be happy to show each of you individually, that at the end of that timer, it will lock them all out, so that if someone hasn't answered, they haven't answered. But that's pretty much it with the uh, basics of getting started on the act folks. When you register these, can you use these in other classroom students? You would have to go through the... Uh, the reason we couldn't just pick them up and use them is uh, in this classroom, like we could if we were down in Mrs. Dramus' room, for example, is that all of them are registered to that particular PC, Mrs. Dramus' PC. So yours will be registered to your PC. So I couldn't go to another class or somebody that needs Functionally, yes, they would work, but you'd have to re-register that device for that particular computer. So the answer to your question, yes, they would functionally work regardless of what classroom they're in. It's just a matter of what, what their home base is. Their registration is basically their home base. Right, just like the slates and these. All right. Well, that pretty much takes care of Very informative. Very. Can we get in the compound grade level meeting?